After spending as much time as he desired at Ambapoli's grove, the Buddha proceeded to Baluva near Vasoli. It was there that the Blessed One addressed the gathering of his disciples, known as the Brethren. He spoke to them, saying, Dear monks, let us take up our abode for the upcoming rainy season in the vicinity of Vesoli. Each one of you should find a place to reside according to where your friends and near companions live. As for myself, I shall enter the rainy season here at Baluva. As the Buddha embraced the rainy season, a severe sickness befell him, accompanied by excruciating pain that brought him to the brink of death. Yet, even in the face of such adversity, the Blessed One remained mindful and composed, enduring his ailments with remarkable equanimity. During this trying time, a thought arose within the Buddha's mind. He realized that it would not be appropriate for him to pass away without addressing his disciples and bidding farewell to the order of monks. With firm determination, the Buddha resolved to exert a strong effort of will to subdue the sickness and extend his life until the right moment. Through his unwavering resolve, he successfully subdued the illness, and gradually, his condition improved. As the sickness abated, the Buddha emerged from the confines of the monastery and sought solace in the open air. It was there that his beloved disciple Ananda, accompanied by numerous other disciples, approached the Blessed One. Ananda, visibly moved by the suffering the Buddha had endured, expressed his feelings, saying, Lord, I have witnessed both your good health and the tremendous suffering you had to bear. Upon seeing your illness, my body weakened and the world around me seemed dim and hazy. My faculties were clouded, and yet, in the midst of it all, I found a sliver of comfort in the knowledge that you would not leave this existence without imparting your final instructions to the disciples. In response to Ananda's heartfelt sentiments, the Buddha addressed him on behalf of the Order, emphasizing that he had taught the truth without concealing anything, be it hidden or revealed doctrines. He reassured Ananda and the assembled disciples, stating, Ananda, if anyone harbors the thought that it is I who will lead the brotherhood or that the order is dependent on me, let that notion be dispelled. The Tathagata, myself included, does not hold the closed fist of a teacher who withholds certain teachings. Therefore, there is no need for the Tathagata to leave explicit instructions concerning the order. The Buddha continued, sharing the reality of his aging and the approaching culmination of his journey. He revealed that he had reached the ripe age of 80, and just as an old cart requires extra effort to keep moving, the body of the Tathagata, too, could only be sustained with considerable care. However, the Buddha imparted a crucial message to his disciples. The true ease of the Tathagata's body is found when he ceases attending to external matters and immerses himself in deep meditation, detached from bodily concerns. Encouraging his disciples to cultivate self-reliance, the Buddha offered profound guidance. He instructed them, therefore, Ananda, be lamps unto yourselves. Rely on yourselves alone and do not seek reliance on external support. Hold fast to the truth as a lamp and seek salvation in the truth alone. Do not look for assistance from anyone other than yourselves. The Buddha elucidated how a disciple could become a lamp unto themselves, relying on their own efforts and not relying on external assistance. He explained that one should regard their body, sensations, thoughts, reasoning, and feelings with diligence, thoughtfulness, and mindfulness. By doing so, 
they could overcome the grief and suffering arising from the body's cravings, sensations, and mental processes. The Buddha further expounded that those individuals who, presently or in the future, become lamps unto themselves, relying on themselves alone and the truth as their guide, and who do not seek external assistance, will reach the highest pinnacle of enlightenment. These disciples, among the blessed one's followers, will be the ones who diligently strive to learn and internalize these teachings. The Buddha concluded his message with a reminder that in life, when faced with uncertainty, one should listen to their heart and trust their intuition. He emphasized the importance of being a steady rock, relying on oneself and one's inner wisdom, just as the Buddha did on his path to enlightenment. In this final teaching, the Buddha left a profound legacy for his disciples and all future practitioners. He revealed the secret to finding enlightenment. Looking inward, relying on oneself, and understanding the immense power of self-reliance. This timeless wisdom encourages individuals to trust their inner guidance, become their own support, and seek enlightenment within themselves. May this teaching inspire and guide us on our spiritual journey as we learn to rely on ourselves and find the truth within. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving a like and subscribing. Stay focused. Be happy.